Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers and welcome to my channel and you are watching the fourth part of the series of our partial fraction decomposition which is indeed the last part. And uh, in the first three videos we dealt the first three types of our partial fraction decompositions with the relative examples. So those who haven't uh, approached those videos I highly recommend them to watch them first and then move ahead to this one. Okay, so as I told you then, uh, there, that in the first three videos, we deal with the first, second, and third uh, types of our partial fraction decomposition. And in this one, in the last part, we are going to deal the fourth type, how we are going to handle the constants and how we are going to evaluate the constant values of the partial fraction, fraction decomposition of type 4. What is the type 4? Let's have a look and after that we will move to the subjective examples connected to it. Okay, so let's have a look to the fourth type of partial fractions. And you can also uh, uh, see the uh, relative theorem in the description box below as well. So the fourth type of partial fraction decomposition is what? It says, the theorem explains that if a quadratic factor, I must say irreducible quadratic uh, expression, if that uh, such kind of irreducible quadratic expression is present in the denominator, then uh, you how you're going to split up in partial fractions. So that's what this uh, type 4 is explaining you. It says that if a quadratic factor, irreducible one, occurs n times, okay, as a factor of your denominator uh, of a function, then there are n number of partial fractions of in, uh, so expressed in this form. You're going to split up in this form. Whereas this capital B1, C1, and so on up to Bn and Cn uh, are the constant values. There are any real numbers. And our objective is to, is to evaluate or to find out the values of these constants. So what is the way and what is the methodology? And before approaching that thing, I should uh, put down a, a very simple example in order to get the idea how we split up uh, mm, this type of partial uh, fraction like for example I say that if I'm having a certain function f of x okay and it, it is expressed in this form and it's entirely having power Three on it, okay. It is having an entire power cube on it, and you can see here that this is a quadratic uh, expression, and you cannot uh, split it into a factor in, through a midterm breaking process. So it is this is an irreducible uh, quadratic expression, and is occurring three times in the denominator. So how you are going to uh, split up in partial fractions? You are going to and, uh, and one thing more that you can see that the degree of the numerator is 2 and the degree of the denominator is 6, okay? So you know that the highest power uh, on, the ver uh, um, on that certain algebraic expression is said to be the degree of that expression. So once when you open up this irreducible quadratic equation with, uh, uh, with respect to irreducible quadratic expression with respect to cubic power, the highest power that you are going to get over there is six. So the degree of your degree of your denominator d of x is greater than the degree of your numerator n of x. You can see this is your six and this is your two. Okay, so this is a proper uh, rational algebraic function. You do not have to uh, divide and you, you do not have to uh, reduce it as the sum of the algebraic sum of a quotient and the proper function that you are going to obtain through combining the remainder and the divisor. You're not going to uh, move ahead to that approach. So it's an easy one. It is already a proper uh, rational algebraic function. So now move ahead and you, we are now uh, going to split up uh, this proper function into partial fractions according to this format explained in the theorem. So you see the maximum power you are having over here is uh, 3. So let's break it up. It's b1x plus c1 
whatever the value you are going to have in the subscript in the co uh, of the constants this is going to behave as a power of this irreducible quadratic expression okay so this is going to be x squared plus x plus 1 whole power 1 and we do not express that plus the next number comes after 1 is 2 and this 2 is going to behave as the overall power of your denominator x expression like that and now we move ahead to the final this is the maximum power we are having over here so we are going to stop our work and and this subscript is going to behave with a power over here and we are going to stop now so you see our objective is to get the values of our b1 c1 b2 c2 b3 and c3 respectively so what is the way of getting these values we are going to understand this thing with the help of a coming uh, example okay so let's move ahead to the example and let's get the idea more deeply okay so here you go an example it's a very delicious one so you see you are having entirely if you multiply these two expressions this one is quadratic in nature this one is quartic in nature of degree four so once when you multiply these two factors the combined expression that you are going to get as a resultant it is going to have a degree four uh, uh, sorry i'm sorry degree six so you see the degree of the denominator is six and the degree of the numerator is two so six is greater than two definitely so this is a proper rational algebraic function so you are simply going to move ahead and you are going to resolve the denominators and then you have to split up into partial fractions so let me simplify the denominators the denominator expressions do you see this is 1 minus x power 4 so i can explain this thing i can i can modify this thing in this way okay for simplicity i just try to be more exhaustive so this is uh i can refer the algebraic identity in this factor which is this a minus b okay so if this is your a one is your a x square is your b and a square minus b square i'm going to split up into these two partial fraction into these two linear factors okay so let me write it down so let me write it like this so these are the two i'm sorry they are not linear they are quadratic factors because the uh, initially this factor is was having a power four this was a quartic in nature so after splitting it gives you two uh, quadratic uh, expressions and this this one is copied as it is so you can see that these two are similar um, algebra, um, quadratic irreducible quadratic expressions so uh, how about if I multiply them then I can write it like 1 plus x square whole square like this okay and this one I can break up as once again by using this algebraic identity so it is going to be 1 minus x and 1 plus x all right so now it has been split up into two linear factors so that's how we simplify this denominator and you can see that after simplification it is giving you two linear factors and one irreducible quadratic expression is occurring twice over here so we are going to use type 1 and type 4 techniques uh, in while while splitting uh, while splitting it up into partial fractions so you see this thing can be written in this way let me write it down that f of x is 8x squared on 1 minus x into 1 plus x into 1 plus x square whole square so this are uh, these two are going to be written in this way and those who have watched my first video they can easily uh, understand this thing and those who haven't I recommend them to watch them first 
okay and then move ahead to this one and you see this is the irreducible quadratic expression occurring two times so and we are going to follow what was given in the theorem like this okay and let it be equation number one we name it equation number one for convenience so this is it and now we are going to we are, our objective is to find the value of our a b c1 d1 c2 and d to respectively now you can notice here that in the first uh, the first two partial fractions are having linear factors this is of type they belong to type 1 so the first two constants a and b can be easily determined by substituting uh, the two values of x by equating these two linear factors to 0 1 by 1 in this uh, in the equation number 1 we are going to get the value of our a and b respectively and and the values of c1 d1 c2 and d2 can are, are, are going to be determined by means of comparing coefficient method okay so let's move ahead and first of all we are going to determine the the two values of x by equating these two linear factors to zero so let us do it over here in a rough column so when i equate my first linear factor to zero i'm going to get x1 and the second linear factor when i equate it to zero i am going to get x equals to minus one so these are the two values of x which I'm which I'm going to substitute one by one in my equation number one and this is going to give me the value of my a and b respectively okay so let's let's do ahead and okay I just forgot to take out the LCM at the right side and I'm going to get equation number two and I just uh, messed up a little bit so after getting equation number two once when I get the LCM at the right hand side in that equation two we are going to substitute the two values of x and we are going to get a and b so sorry for a bit mess up so let's let's get uh, the LCM work at the right side so once when we take out the LCM you see all these factors uh, LCM is what it is the product of common and uncommon factors but these are the common factors and these two are the uncommon factors so we are going to write the product of our uncommon and common factors like this so what is going to be over here I have explained how to get the LCM and how to write uh, the values in the numerators I've explained it quite exhaustively in my first three videos so I'm not going to repeat it over here I'm going to write it directly okay so it's going to be space is lacking here so I'm going to write it like this and it's getting multiplied with 1 minus x squared okay that's it now you can see that the denominators I'm going to cancel them on both sides of equality in a straight way and it is done so the equation that I'm going to get now is going to be 8x square equal to this whole numerator so now I'm going to write it properly okay so here you go at 8x square is equal to this whole numerator and I've just written over here and this is going to be my equation number two and in this equation I'm going to put my x values both these values one by one and I'm going to get my uh, the constant numerators of my linear partial fractions okay so let's move ahead and that's nothing so now we are going to put x equal to 1 in equation 2 okay that's it 
so wherever we are having our x we are going to put one there give the reference of your equation to like this and substitute your x value and the square of one is one so i'm just writing my one directly okay So you can see this thing, this thing, and this thing will become zero because of one minus one everywhere. So what is left in the next step is just the value of your a. Okay, this thing is one. Uh, I'm sorry, this is one square is one, and one into eight gives you eight. And this is your two, and this is your two is square. So it's going to be your four. Okay, so this is eight a. So 8 is equals to 8a and this thing is therefore the, uh, gives you the value of your a as 1, okay? So that's how the value of your uh, constant of your first linear factor has been obtained. That's it. In the same way, we are going to put this value x equals to minus 1 in same equation number 2 and we are going to get the value of our b. So let's do it. So now in this equation number two we are going to put x equals to minus one the next value of x okay so wherever you are having your x you're going to put minus one there and you know minus one squared is one okay so minus one is substituted over here so minus and plus give you minus one so i'm just writing it directly it gives you this okay and the square of your minus one gives you one so I'm going to write one directly. Okay, I'm not going to be so much uh, explanatory over here in this step. Okay, you are having minus outside and the value of x is minus one. So minus minus give you plus. So it becomes one plus one. Square of minus one is again one. So I've, I've just written one here. so on we are going to move over here lack of space one one minus x square it gives you one minus one okay so now you can see that the value of this term this term and this term will become zero because of one minus one so what is left over here is this term only because it becomes entirely zero this is your two and this is your two is square which is four c1x plus d1 is going to be multiplied with zero and so is going to happen with your c2x plus d2 it is also getting multiplied with zero because of this so these three terms are going to vanish let's vanish them it's done and it becomes 8b and 8 then goes over here in the denominator it is going to give you the value of your b which is also 1 likewise your first constant a okay so now the first two the first two constant values have been evaluated now what are left are c1 d1 c2 and d2 respectively and they correspond to your irreducible quadratic equation so we are going to obtain these constant values through comparing coefficient method, okay? So over here, in equation number two, we are going to do some work. We are going to open them up, and then we are going to compare it through, uh, with respect to the coefficients of your all uh, x variables having different powers, and, and, uh, and so do the constant values. So let's have a look, and let's do it. So now I'm going to multiply it. It's a big work. Okay, so let's compose and let's do it. 
Okay, now I'm going to open up this 1 plus x squared whole square with respect to the formula of a plus b whole square. So it gives me 1 plus 2x squared plus x power 4. Okay, I'm using here the algebraic identity of a plus b whole square is equals to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, and similarly, this is going to be copied as it is and once again I'm going to apply the same formula over here. Okay, and this is equal to 1 minus x power 4, a minus b, a plus b equals to a square plus b square. So I'm going to apply a backward substitution and I'm going to enclose it into a square minus b square format, okay. So it is giving me c1x plus b1 is getting multiplied with 1 minus x power 4, okay. and. c2x plus d2x is getting multiplied with 1 minus x square and we are going to do no effort over here we'll just copy this this term as it is okay now what we have to do we are going to multiply these two uh, factors and let's see what we get here Okay, once when I multiply these two factors, I'm getting this, okay? And once when I multiply these two factors, I'm getting this. So you see you are having, a, you are having uh, an expression of uh, degree 5. These are the quintic expressions, okay? And C1x plus D1 is going to be multiplied with this uh, x4. So let us multiply just C1x first of all with these two. The C1 is going to be written outside and this x is simply getting multiplied. So it gives me this. And plus D1 is getting multiplied with this whole. Just like that. Okay. Now similarly we are going to do the same work with, with over here. The C2x is getting multiplied with this and then afterwards we are going to multiply D2 with this. Okay. So it becomes C2 x minus x cubed plus d2 is getting multiplied with 1 minus x squared. This is it. Now what I have to do, I'm going to multiply all my uh, constant values with these expression terms so I've just multiplied my first constant values with all the terms inside the bracket and I did the same thing over here as well so it gives you these long terms now I'm going to multiply my c1 with these two terms and so forth I'll keep on moving so it's going to be cm c1x minus c1x power 5 okay plus d1 minus d1 x4 plus d1 minus d1 x power 4 okay and c2x plus c2x minus c2x cube plus d2 minus dx uh, d2x square this is it now we are going to apply the process of comparing coefficients okay now before comparing coefficients, let us see now uh, the maximum uh, degree, uh, the maximum power you can observe over here at this side is, is 5, okay? So all the co coefficients which are attached with x power 5, how many they are? a x5 minus b x5 minus c1 x5 and that's it, okay? So it's going to be a minus minus b and minus c1 x power 5 okay plus now the second variable the second power that comes is x power 4 so how many uh, um, coefficients we are having involving x is square you see let me use a different notation this is one x is square x power 4 this is another x power 4 and 
let us search for more this is another x power 4 and that's it okay three terms we are having here there's going to be plus a plus b minus d1 x power 4 okay same process we are going to do for our x cube how many x cubes we are having 2a x cube minus 2b x cube minus c2 x cube and that's it so it's going to be 2a minus 2b minus c2 x cube okay now move ahead to the x square how many x squares we are having 2a x square and then 2b x square and then simply d2 x square okay i'm sure i'm not missing anything here yes 2a plus 2b minus d2 x square okay this is it and now just x let's go ahead for the x how many x we are having plus a x minus b x okay minus b x and then plus c1 x plus c2 x and that's it so let us write x outside okay now let's see how many constants we are having we are having just one constant a and then we are having plus b constant and then there is no constant here entirely move ahead plus d1 plus d2 these are the constants so plus d1 plus d2 so these are the constant values now we are going to apply the comparing coefficient values okay comparing coefficient process so you can see at the left hand side you're just having a coefficient involving x square and no more you're not having a coefficient involving x power 5 x power 4 x cube x and constants so all these parts are going to be written are going to be equated to zero and only this x square coefficient is going to be equal to your eight so, okay so we are going to have five equations over here so let us write down so on comparing the coefficients we just got the six equations and in the beginning we have already obtained the value of our a and b which are which both are one uh, it's just a coincidence so you see c1 and d1 value can easily be obtained by substituting the value of our, of our a and b over here so you can see here and c2 can also be obtained by substituting the value of our a and b and d2 can also be obtained by substituting the value of our a and b so all these four required constant values can be accomplished very easily so let's do it so it's you see if i just put my equation number one if i just use my equation number one here so a and b are this so this becomes zero so this thing tells me that my c1 is zero in the same way with respect to equation number with respect to this equation number two if i put the value of my a and b i just got that it is 2 minus d1 equals to 0 so this thing tells me that my d1 is equal to 2 okay so likewise we can obtain the value of our c2 and d2 respectively so let us do it directly so i'm using this equation substituting the value of my a b and c2 equals to 0 so this becomes 2 minus 2 minus c2 equals to 0 so this thing tells that c2 so this thing tells that my c2 is 0 okay equation 4 substitute the values of your a b d2 equals to your 8 so this thing gives you 2 plus 2 minus d2 equals to your 8 okay so this is going to be 4 minus d2 equal to your 8 so 
this thing gives you 4 minus 8 equals to your d2, which is d2 equals to minus 4. Alright, a1, b1, c1, d1, c2, d2, or all are now here. You are going to substitute in your equation number 1, and that's how you split your partial, uh, your proper rational function into partial fractions, algebraic sum of partial fractions. So let us substitute these values and get the format. Let's see. Okay, so at C1 and C2 uh, comes out to be 0. So once when I substitute C1 and C2 over here, so this term is going to be vanished here and just D1 and D2 are left. So we just simply substitute the values over here and we just got the algebraic sum of partial fractions equivalent to this function. So that's how we solve uh, the uh, rational functions with respect to partial fractions, decomposition involving type 4. So this, this question was actually the combination of type 1 and type 4 and I hope you have now understood how to handle the uh, partial, uh, proper, uh, proper or improper functions involving type 4 denominator. So that's all for today. My video is over and so do the topic. And uh, if you find this video helpful, I humbly suggest to subscribe my channel, hit on the like and share this video as much as you can so that others will also get helped. Take good care of yourself. And I once again recommend you to watch the first three videos of the same topic. Allah Hafiz.